let's get back to this a little bit. <clears throat> she says, the mother says, my son was robbed of his childhood. She's absolutely right. Says, oh, let me blow this up a little bit. Oh, not like that. All right. Says, um, all right. Now, uh, now he's having to be a father. He's a victim. So true. And he's going to live with that for the rest of his life. I feel like if she was a man and he was a little girl, it would definitely be different. They would be seeking more. I feel like because he is not a woman, they are not seeking more. They are having compassion for her. They're having compassion for her. And when I brought up my brother Arturo, that was the first sentiment that came out of my man. I mean... <laughs> You wanted justice, but you also wanted compassion for her. But would this same compassion be available for the taking if the roles were reversed, right? If the roles were reversed in Georgia, how would this how would this play out in Georgia, do you think? Oh, it'd be it'd be vastly different in almost every jurisdiction that I know of. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about the law being blind and we talk about treating everyone the same, but we know there's a double standard. You talk about it on your show all the time about the, the inherent biases against black people, the inherent biases against Hispanic people. Uh, this is another one. This is, this is not on that level, but I tell you, uh, it, it, any man who in a position of authority had sexual relations with a 13 year old girl in a car oh. and her pregnant, that person would probably get a life sentence in every jurisdiction in Georgia. A life sentence, guys. Look, we go from probation, possibly, to a life sentence, right? Now, now mm -hmm, go ahead. I was just going to say that the reason is really because gender or sex is taken into account in our laws. We talked earlier in the show about how what the definition of great is. But, you know, the other thing is only one of the sexes can can get pregnant. And in Georgia, we have a, a couple of cases that talk about a, a female victim who has to take a child to term and endures a particularly difficult child. Wait, let me, let, me, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you because I want to get to that. Let me just finish this. Uh, let me finish this article right quick because what you're getting into is so important and super interesting. So let me just finish this up. Um, it says, per KKTV, the prosecution said in court, that she had already had the child. Um, the teenage mother claimed that her family should have custody of the child. And the court officials noted that needed to be uh, handled separately. Correct, because you know it's not like the 13 year old and the mother were, ma were married, right? And it's not like he's filed a legitimation. So as it stands right now, even though the boy is the biological father of the child, he is not the legal father. So the only person at this juncture who can have custody of the, the boy, uh, of, of the child, sorry, is the mother, is, yeah. is the, is the right. aggressor. And to be fair, it looks a little weird for the grandmother, the, 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 the child's mother, the victim's mother, to be saying to give us custody of the, 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 the victim baby when the biological mother of the victim couldn't even keep her own son in the home <laughs> for weeks at a time. So that, that's that's a little deep right there, right? That's, that's so true. And I, I was reluctant to say it earlier, but I bet we're going to find out that one of the reasons that the, the young boy's mother is so outraged is she's experiencing a little guilt. Mm. I my son home safe with me because of something I did or some behavior, some situation maybe beyond her control could be a factor of poverty, could be a factor of, of many things, but she's feeling guilt. And because she feels guilt, she's lashing out extra harshly uh, against the DA's office. But, but I, I feel like if we knew all the behind the scenes facts, we'd probably agree that the DA got it right. I mean, we, eh, that's hard. I mean, I was with you until you said the word right, but it, there, there is some, there are absolutely some facts that will inform this, this situation. Totally agree. Yeah. And then lastly, it says in May, uh, Serena will discover how long she will be under probation. So it seems like from this, from this article, she's already pled guilty. And just what's on the table is, you know, how long she's going to be on probation, but there will be no jail time. 
right? Well, mm -hmm. well, that, that's what it looks like. We there's a, a guilty plea is now on the books, but sentencing hasn't occurred. And just because the DA and the defense have presented a joint recommendation of no jail doesn't necessarily mean that the judge will follow it. Now, if the judge decides not to follow it, he will give the defendant the opportunity to withdraw her guilty plea and go to trial. But I think probably what we're going to see is the judge is going to follow the recommendation. The judge is going to say, hey, you guys know this case better than me. Based on the charge, based on the, the uh, statement of facts that's been provided by both sides, I'm going to set this case for a period of probation of X. I think you're going to see at least 10 years of probation, maybe 20 years of probation during which time she'll have no contact with any minor. She'll be restricted from certain places she can live, certain places she can work. She can't live close to a, a church or a school or a school bus stop or any place where children regularly congregate like a playground. She can't go to an amusement park. There's going to be a lot of limitations. So she's really not getting off scot-free. She's just not going to prison. And, and when, when I talk about prison, I really want you to picture in your mind Shawshank Redemption. That's prison. Okay, that's not an exaggeration. Prison is a serious, serious punishment for only the most contemptible violent criminals, in my opinion. Well, maybe you are contemptible if you groom a boy into calling you mommy and then you fuck him in the car. <laughs> like, there has to be, someone has to go to prison. And it seems like this lady fits the bill, right? I mean, I don't know. You're thinking, you're thinking work release. <laughs> I don't know. I just work release. That's what You're I'm <laughs> Shout out to my, shout out to my brother Arturo, man. So let, let's do this because we you were we were about to go down this road. This is super interesting. So let's imagine that the this well, let, let's look at this for example. Let me let me bring this up. I want to let's imagine that this case and its counterpoint, which we'll say is when a man does it against a woman. Let's imagine that this case was in Georgia, right? So right here, you have the uh, the Georgia Code. So this is our laws, guys. And let's talk about child molestation and aggravated child molestation. Lord knows this video is going to get demonetized, but we, we just got to call a spade a spade. So in Georgia, guys, listen up. In Georgia, a person commits the offense of child molestation when such person, number one, does any immoral or indecent act in the presence of or with a child under the age of 16 with the intent to arouse or satisfy the sexual desires of either the child or the person. So in this case, the woman would have had to commit an immoral or indecent act with the child who is 13 to arouse the sexual desires of either her or the child. She had sex with him in a car. So can we agree, would you say, Arturo, that, you know, if this were in Georgia, she would be guilty of the the the, the charge of, of child molestation under the facts as we know them right now? No question. She would be guilty of a child molestation. And it is up to the jury to determine what is an immoral or an indecent act to or with or in the presence of a child. But I think there's no question that uh, sexual intercourse with a minor would be immoral and indecent. So she's definitely guilty of child molestation. And the punishment for child molestation in Georgia is between five years and 20 years. Yo, <laughs> five years and 20. So this is what I don't understand, Arturo, because you're calling for compassion for this woman. You know, we're, we're tongue in cheek when we're saying you're calling for work release, right? But you say if this case were in Georgia, she would absolutely be guilty of child molestation, which is a five to 20. And right. those five years would not be in jail. Those five years would be in Shawshank Redemption. Well, in Georgia, that five-year mandatory minimum can be suspended, probated, or deferred. Oh, suspended sentence. <laughs> He's so, always got to out. <laughs> so it's five-year mandatory minimum, but that can be five years of probation. Wow. And then on the other side, it can be 20 years of prison as the maximum. That's and so the offense. For the second offense or any subsequent offense, it's 10 to 30. 10 to 30. So those 10 years as well could be uh, suspended or probated? Right. Unless there's some aggravating factors in another code section, such as uh, um, kidnapping the child, moving the child from one place to another, or using a weapon or threats of violence or harm or 
if you if you're a repeat offender, if you have a similar transaction, those kinds of things could prevent you from getting your your sentence probated. But with, without those factors here, if uh, if Miss Serrano were in Georgia, she'd be looking at five years of probation to up to 20 years in prison for this first offense. Interesting. Now, let's take a look at it because we talked about uh, child molestation, but there's also aggravated child molestation. And it says here in the Georgia Code that a person commits the offense of aggravated child molestation when the person uh, commits an offense of child molestation, which act physically injures the child or involves sodomy. So it seems like aggravated child molestation is where there is child molestation plus there is injury or an act of sodomy. What is an act of, of sodomy? So great question. So uh, without being too graphic, you can just say that uh, sodomy collectively refers to oral sex or anal sex. Okay, so would the sodomy would the sodomy need to be on him or could it also be an act of sodomy to get to aggravated child molestation if she made the boy uh, give her oral sex? It would, it would go both ways. So any sexual contact between the mouth of one person and the sex organs or anus of the other person or with the sex organs of one person and the anus of the other person. So yes, in your hypothetical, if she, the defendant, uh, Ms. Serrano performed oral sex on the child victim, that would be in Georgia aggravated child molestation. Okay, guys, listen, listen. You know, if if someone oh, uh, 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 if, if, if if someone gets pulled over for drunk driving and is arrested for drunk driving, was it ever that person's first time dr driving drunk? No, it wasn't. Does anybody believe? that this boy who lived with this woman off and on for weeks and that they were having sex, does anybody believe that they weren't doing oral sex as well? It apparently, in this case, if, it, if there was no oral sex, then it would just be uh, child molestation. But if there was oral sex, then it would be aggravated child molestation. Put a yes in the chat if you think that there was actually aggravated child molestation somewhere in these people's history. Put a no if you're like, no, they just had the sex the one time in the car, right? And Arturo, for the relevancy of this, do you, what is the, the, the punishment for aggravated child molestation? Is it higher than regular child molestation? Oh, yes. For aggravated child molestation, the mandatory minimum sentence is 25 years in prison, wow. which may not be suspended, probated, or deferred. You can't even get parole. You will serve every single day, day for day of the 25 years minimum. Well, listen, listen to this, guys. Listen and, and see if it makes sense now, because I don't know. It seems that if the boy and the woman had regular vaginal sex, then she could get off with a suspended five year sentence, no jail time. Right. But if they had no vaginal sex and just had oral sex, then he could go to prison for 20, she can go to prison for 25 years, day for day minimum? Minimum and up oh. to prison as a, as, as a maximum. So really the oral sex is much more dangerous than the vaginal sex, is that right? Yes, and let me tell you why. This is what I was talking about way back in the beginning about the structural misogyny of our criminal legal system. These laws where we lose our minds over oral sex come from a period of time when men treated women like property. You know, there was no such thing as grape until about the mid 1800s. Mm. Before for that, going all the way back to the 13th century, a man could grape a woman anytime he wanted to. And there was no crime unless the woman victim was like royalty or married. And then if she was married, it was only a property crime because the victim was the other man, the husband. Mm. You know, that's from the 13th century coming all the way forward. That's why here male and usually old white male legislators who write the laws, they go crazy when they think about their wives or their daughters or their sisters engaging in oral sex. And so they make the punishment so much worse. It is absurd that the scenario that you pointed out of the woman defendant on the male 
victim oral sex is 25 years, but vaginal intercourse missionary style, five years probation. Isn't that crazy? What's the difference? What is the difference except the Victorian attitudes of our laws towards sex? Interesting. That is amazing. Like who knew in the chat that you could get off scot-free with a probated sentence for vaginal, for the doggy style, long stroke, but you just put the tip in the mouth one time, put the tip in and it's 25 years minimum day for day. Who thinks that's fair? Having said that, we all, <laughs> we get all suspect we get all, I'll say we, I would say we know, but I don't want to do this defamation shit. So we all suspect that there was absolutely oral sex involved in the relationship between these two people. And the fact that she can go from a 25 year minimum day for day to basically just probation with the sex offender registry, fine, but with probation, it's astounding. And like you said, Arturo, you pointed out, which I think everybody believes if the shoe were on the other foot, Right. This man would actually. This man would absolutely be looking at this twenty-five year minimum. Do, do you believe that? Do you, do you yeah. think that's right? Absolutely. There would be a, a, a much harsher view taken by everyone in the case. Um, in fact, it wouldn't surprise me that if a pregnancy was involved, if and the genders were reversed, that the man would be looking at a life sentence. Mm. A life sentence. And let me explain why. Because there are a couple of cases now that in Georgia that have, have alleged that under certain circumstances, pregnancy and the enduring of childbirth is injury. So remember when you read the statute about aggravated child molestation, it's not just sodomy, it's also injury. So mm. if you have regular vaginal intercourse and injure the child, now it's 25 years mandatory minimum up to life in prison. And the injury can just be the testimony of the victim that she says, you know, it hurt. Um, wow. if, if pregnancy involved, we all know that uh, natural pregnancy, it, it affects and limits a woman's physical abilities and childbirth is very painful. Sometimes during childbirth, you even have a uh, serious tearing of the tissues. And the Georgia Supreme court has said that that is an injury sufficient to sustain a conviction of aggravated child molestation. This is deep, guys. This is deep. Let me give a big shout.